What's going on here, Dr. Justin Pierce with my man? Dr. Seth, what is up, Dr. Justin? How's life? Man, life is good. Uh, great conversation last week. We had a lot of really good feedback. Uh, people just really wanting this, and, and, and they just said that we kind of knew what we were talking about. That's kind of good to know, too. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm glad our wives aren't on this because, you know, we don't ever know what we're talking about, right? It's very true. So make sure you guys post and tag Dr. Shannon, Dr. Lacey, so they can see that. That would be helpful. Yes. Um, but today we want to talk about something, and this is this is a, a really big topic because I, I don't know the numbers statistically, but so many people struggle and deal with acid reflux, GERD, and heartburn, right? And I'll, I'll lead with this, Dr. Seth, and I'll let you take over because this is one of my favorite topics because it's this. It's like you ever watch like a commercial, right? And so yeah. they go on these commercials and, you know, it's this like – beautiful stroll through the park and like everything's so great and brilliant. And like, as long as you take this acid reflux pill, you can enjoy life, except for the fact that you're going to have explosive diarrhea. You're never going to have sex again. You're probably going to die. Uh, you're going to have acid reflux GERD even worse. And you're, it's just like all these crazy things, but we do whatever we can to just treat these damn symptoms. It's absolutely unbelievable. Yep. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, I love working with every single patient, um, that walks through the door in our clinic or we work with remotely, whatever it is. But um, I, just full transparency, 80% of y'all are, are very boring. It's the same case over and over and over again. It's just like, okay, do this, this, and this, and run this test, and this is probably what's going to come back. And it's just very mundane. Um, the 20% um, are the puzzles that have to get put together. And those are the ones that just like, it, it stimulates my mind. Like things like, oh my gosh, okay, like, it's, it's got to either be this or this. Let's try this. Let's do that. And you really got to kind of like detective your way through it, so to speak. Um, I will say that digestive disorder stuff, um, there has to be a component of poor digestion somewhere along the chain. Um, figuring out where that is, is really the key to digestive, digestive system disorder, right? So um, we have to start with, all right, food in the mouth. Where does it go? Esophagus to stomach. If we don't have that first step right, we can do all the best probiotics. We can do, you know, fermented foods. We can do fortification. We can clear infections. We can, you know, do colonics, all these great things. And guess what? How's the digestive system going to be, Dr. Justin? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It ain't going to work, right? So let's figure out that first base. What's going on there? Do we have a problem? How do we figure out if we have a problem, if we have dysfunction, what is the standard medical treatment for that dysfunction? Is it successful? I'm going to tell you right now, if it were successful, you wouldn't be sitting on this Facebook Live right now because you take, what, one antacid and your life changes. And you're like, okay, good. Well, I guess we don't have that problem anymore. And the reality is now you created a chronic customer over and over and over again. So, Dr. Justin, why is it that Pepsi AC cannot be the long-term solution to acid reflux? Um, why, why is this happening in the body? Why, why is the body dysfunctioning? What's going on? Yeah. Well, first things first is like, do drugs treat symptoms? And the answer is absolutely like they're great at treating symptoms. I'm not very good at drinking my water, but it's just water. At least it wasn't coffee or something. But anyways, that so now everybody can see I spilt water when I drink. So uh, I could barely see it until you pointed it out. And then you gotten away with it. You saw me do it anyways. Yeah. Um, Drugs are very good at treating symptoms, right? Because obviously they work or you would stop taking them. But again, I think the number one thing to understand is that is acid reflux from too much acid, which therefore an antacid or a, a meprazole or a pepsid or whatever is going to help, or is it just all bass acids? And they're explained so wrong. So you gotta understand, number one, is that it's not from the overproduction of stomach acid. In fact, if it was probably too much acid, your digestive system would probably be working pretty damn good and you yeah. wouldn't really have many problems because you need stomach acid in order to break down and digest things, specifically proteins, so that we can get and not have food allergies, which Dr. Seth was kind of leading to that, that point as well. But stomach acid or lack of stomach acid is really the main cause of having acid reflux. And then what are the causes of you having low stomach acid is what we wanna talk about. Because if we can remove causes, if we can remove triggers, that's how your body restores. That's how you get healed. That's how you don't need, I, I, I can think of a handful of people just out of the top of my head 
who came to me having this exact same problem. And within the first few weeks of finding their triggers, like it was gone and we haven't looked back. And that happens all the gosh darn time. So if you're struggling with acid reflux, you're just doing the wrong darn thing and you need to look somewhere differently. So let's talk about the main causes of low stomach acid, therefore leading to acid reflux, right? Yep, let's do it. So here's the thing. The number one cause of poor stomach acidity production is chronic sympathetic stimulation. And what does that mean in layman's terms? It means- It sounds interesting. <laughs> I know. It means stress all the time, day in and day out, week in and week out, year in and year out. If that is you, you're going to have to pay a price at some point. Usually it manifests uh, in the digestive system, mainly stomach acidity production, right? So. Um, we can help you and we can create a natural band-aid to help in improving stomach acidity production. But really the long-term solution is what? Shifting your lifestyle, getting you out of a chronic sympathetic state. Maybe that means there's job stuff. Maybe that means relational stuff. Maybe that means kid stuff, whatever it is, but addressing those things, getting you to adapt to your environment better, getting your parasympathetic nervous system firing efficiently is going to be the long-term solution. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And we talked about stress and we'll talk about stress Probably each and every time we get on one of these Facebook lives, YouTubes and, and whatnot, it's just because stress is such a big deal, specifically more for women than men, just simply because women lack the ability to digest stress and get rid of stress the way men can, physiologically speaking, right? And, and so it just plays such a big role. Um, and, then, and then the next thing, and he talked about like, like food in your mouth. And so before I even say food allergies, can we say that we're an instant gratification society? Is that safe to say? Yeah. And we're always on the go and we never have time due to sports and school and, and work and all these things. Do you chew your food 30 times and pulverize it so it's liquid before you swallow it? Or are you just swallowing this stuff down so you can move on to the next thing? And come on, the reality is, is it's just how quickly can we eat this food to move to the next thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Two points on that. Number one, I grew up with an older brother. And so if you didn't eat your food very, very quickly, it was his food. So I learned a really nasty habit early on of like, you had to eat like prison rules where you got your, your arms around your food and you're like shoveling in. My, my mom's like, could you even taste it? You guys are just inhaling it, right? Um, and then uh, secondarily, um, I have a patient right now um, who's, who's uh, he's got stage four cancer. He's working with a clinic in Spain. Um, and the number one thing that they asked him to do on his report, because his digestive system is a mess, is they said, you have got to chew every bite of food 30 to 40 times before you swallow it. If you don't do that, you're not giving your digestive system a chance and it's already got one, one arm tied behind its back. It's an impossibility to break down what you're trying to break down. So food for thought on that. Yeah. That, and listen, I think if you can take away something that, that you can implement right now from this, this talk today, it's just chew your gosh darn food. You got to chew your food. And, and it drives me crazy. Like those people that sit there and chew their food. Right. Because it's like, come, dude, we got, I, we, why, what are you taking so long? Right. But, uh, but I've learned to slow down a little bit, or at least I haven't learned that, that. That would be lying. I'm trying to learn to slow down and take your time. Yeah. Now I only have like one arm over my food, not, uh, not two. So yeah, we're getting better. We're, we're being reformed. Good. Good. Um, and then, and then the other thing, then talking about the food, and obviously you got to chew it, but you got to chew the food that's right for your body. And everybody's very unique and individualized. And so that's why you look at some of these, these, um, these doctors and they're doing these AIP diets and they're doing these elimination diets and stuff and telling you not to eat the lectins and not all these things. And, you know, there's a lot of good value in there, but everybody is unique and different. So what I can eat is very different than what Dr. Seth can eat. Now, Dr. Yeah. Google says that the, the stuff that's good for him and I and you guys as well is the same stuff. But again, we talked about this last week. I was allergic to broccoli, cauliflower, lettuce, rice, tomatoes, onions, garlic, pepper, eggs, almonds, peanuts, soy, wheat, dairy, cheese, corn, lentils, green beans, blah, blah, all these different things. And a lot of those healthy anti-inflammatory foods are not right for me, or let me say were not right for me because they are today because I fixed the underlying things. So, so you got acid reflux, you need to know what food you should be eating and you need to get food allergies done first and foremost. Right? 100%. Hey, Trina, where is, uh, where is Lake Charles near? Let me know. Um, yeah, but we, hey, look, we have to fix the underlying cause here. And so um, I will say one of the worst things that a person can do when they're trying to investigate what's wrong with their digestive system 
is that Dr. Google, man, that he's a, he, he or she is a bad doc, a really bad doc because you, you Google what to do for digestive stuff. And it's like, take this magic powder drink. And I promise you there's going to be, you know, three, four, five, six different food sensitivities that you, if you ever hadn't tested, you're, there's going to be a problem. Um, I had a patient last week uh, from New York and she, she connected with me and very, very, very much interested in food sensitivity testing. And so the first question I ever ask when somebody says that is, why are you wanting to detect your food sensitivities? And she's like, oh, and rattles off all this digestive stuff. And I go, I, I agree that testing our food is going to be like a great first step, but we got to figure out why all of these are happening. So Dr. Justin, why, why would a person be totally fine with X, Y, and Z foods? And then all of a sudden... Uh, there's a year and a half of COVID and all of these food sensitivities are popping up left and right all over the place. Why does that happen in the body? Well, first of all, what you said earlier, stress has played such a big role in all of this, right? Because we've been so stressed, stress is going to cause you to have less stomach acid. It's a stomach acid issue at the end of the day. And, 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 and so if you don't have the proper stomach acid, you can't break down and you can't digest these foods. But we've been sitting at home stressed out. We've been sitting at home ordering Uber Eats. We've been sitting at home eating popcorn and eating all these things and sweets and all these bad foods slash trying to do healthy foods, yet yep. you're eating the wrong foods for you. You got the COVID-15, you got the COVID-20, you got the COVID-30. I think it keeps getting up and up, right? Yep. But, but inflammation, you're inflamed. So now what's causing the gosh darn inflammation? Because if you can figure out what's causing inflammation, you can reverse these things. You can heal. I just say, like, if your body, if you're sick, if I cut your arm, does it heal? Well, yeah. So if you can heal on the outside, your body can still heal on the inside. It's not. Let's investigate and find out why if you want transformation. Definition of insanity says do the same damn thing over and over and hope to get something different and it ain't going to happen. I mean, it's as simple as that, right? Yeah, we got, we got to investigate that. And, and again, <clears throat> when we talk about the causes of inflammation, the, the – your cause of inflammation cannot be the lack of 30 turmeric pills in your body, right? Um, and so I think turmeric, curcumin, all these different things, those are fantastic in the short term to get you out of freaking pain, but we better be investigating why you need those things. Um, if, if you can, if you, if turmeric pills get you able to function, but taking the turmeric pills, uh, taking those away from you puts you right back in the same spot, guess what? You ain't, you ain't fixing the cause of the problem. So we gotta, we gotta get to that. That is, that's huge. I, I think that's so huge right there. Cause we think that if we're not taking a drug to cover up a symptom, we want to do it naturally. And we were taking an herb to cover up a symptom. You think you're fixing a problem. What did I just say? What did he just say? You're covering up a symptom. It's a band aid. Yep. How is that working for you? And how does that work long-term for you? Because eventually turmeric's going to wear out or heaven forbid turmeric is like, you can't get it anymore. Then what wow. do you do? How about this cruel twist of fate? What if you became food sensitive to turmeric? Because you're taking it all the time, your digestive system stinks, and then now all of a sudden you develop a food sensitivity to the thing that was decreasing inflammation in the first place, right? Do you see how that hamster wheel starts running? So we got we got to get to that cause, guys. So let's move into that then, because that, that's a that's a boom statement there. And make sure people understand what that means is that. If you're taking turmeric all the time and you start developing this allergy to it, therefore it's triggering inflammation. The reason why that's happening is we have to not just look at our stomach, but we got to go a little deeper and look at your gut and actually do stool testing. Well, my doctor did a stool test, Dr. Seth, and it came back negative. Yep. For what? Yep. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think that's the, the biggest <clears throat> the frustration with people that are investigating digestive problems is, well, like, I've already had this test done by, by my doc. So when you get a stool test done in a hospital, um, what they are looking for is a very broad spectrum test, making sure that there's nothing in your stool that's going to kill you. So there's a list of like eight or 10 of them. Um, and they're the heavy hitters. They're the ones like, if you guys read the news and they're like, hey, Chipotle, they don't have lettuce anymore because a little kid died from E. coli or whatever. And that happens about once a year or whatever food or vegetable it is. Um, it's, it's a very, very, very dangerous bacteria. And, and so that's what they're going to test for stool wise in the hospital. Um, we also test for that. And I would say maybe one out of a hundred, something comes back positive, um, for like hemorrhagic E. coli, Giardia, C. diff, those types of things. 
Um, I'm glad we test for it because it's nice to know when it does come back, but usually it's like, that's not what we're dealing with. Um, what's going on? Do we have H. pylori growth? Why would H. pylori grow? Do we have too much good bacteria? Do we have not enough good bacteria? Are there opportunistic bacteria? Do you, are you developing an immune response to gluten? Um, is your immune system overactive in your digestive tract? Is it underactive in your digestive tract? If you don't know the answer to these questions, you have no shot trying to fix your digestive system, which is why a GI map is so dang important. Yep. Yep. You got to know, you got to know the balance, the good bacteria, the bad bacteria. It's always simple. It's like, if your house is on fire, you know, you need to get out. If your body is on fire, you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know what it is. You're taking all these antibiotics. You're taking all these, these things, trying to figure out answers and you're just making it worse and worse and worse. Food allergy test testing, stool testing and finding out what in the heck is going on inside there from digestion to absorption, to inflammation, to immunology, to balance, good bacteria, bad bacteria, yeast, overgrowth, parasites. What is it that's setting the fire that's literally burning, that's literally seeping up, the, up your esophagus and it's telling you to stop eating these foods, but you're like, yeah, but I can take a pill and I can keep eating it. You're lazy. <laughs> you don't want to change. Yeah. <clears throat> we got to do something different guys, you know, and, and, you know, talk for another day, but the other thing that people and it's not our fault, right? So a lot of times you go to the doctor and you're like, I've got this, 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 this and wrong, wrong with me. What should I do? And they're like, all right, we're going to send you to these six different specialists. So they compartmentalize your health, right? So we're conditioned to do that as well. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're in a chronic stress state or chronic sympathetic state and your digestive system is just taking a toll and things aren't right and you have all these food allergies, guess what? Co-effects to chronic stress are happening elsewhere in the body. Um, what's going on with your adrenal gland? Is your liver taking a beating? All these different things also need to be investigated. And sure, I'm sure you find this, Dr. Justin. Usually it's like, oh, well, these four problems that you have, it's the same cause. Your digestive system sucks, your liver sucks, and your adrenal gland sucks, right? And just putting that <clears throat> puzzle together and looking at it as a whole is what we do. And so if you're tired of getting compartmentalized to death, time to do something different. Yeah, yeah. And we can sit here and tell you the same stuff. It's like, don't drink alcohol, don't drink carbonated, you know, artificial sweeteners and fried foods. Come on, that's all the basic stuff. That's Dr. Google. We can sit here and tell you, you know, just take a bunch of probiotics and all this stuff. Listen, might that help? Yes, it might just help like the turmeric, but it's not fixing a problem. Do you want to keep treating a symptom or do you want to get fixed and get well? Those are two very, very different things. And can I say this? Because I think it needs to be said, guess what insurance covers, Dr. Seth? Does it cover health care or sick care? He's sick care. It covers sick care. It covers your PPIs. It covers your, your stool test to find out if you have cancer. And, and also, this is just to be clear, thank God for that. Yeah. You, you rule it out, right? Like we're not saying that's a wrong thing. It's just then what? It's negative. Then what? Well, like he said, well, I don't know. Go to your rheumatoid doctor. Go to your endo. Go to this. Go to this. Go to this. Let's keep trying. You do the blood work. All your blood work comes back normal. And you're like, I am not freaking normal. Something's wrong. Well, again. You got to find somebody that can look differently and the, the word investigate and be the detective for you, be on your side and listen and answer the question that you need to get answered. And that is the question. Why? Yep. Amber, um, that's the first step is a discovery call. Um, I, I don't think it's with me, but um, you're going to be in great hands. And I'll tell you what, sometimes it's a little scary. It's a little intimidating to be like, hey, uh, I need help over here. But getting on that call and, and starting to just talk through these things and understanding that you're not alone is going to be is going to be life changing for you. So I'm so excited for you. That's awesome. Um, I had a patient last week, Dr. Justin, and I'll, um, I'll end it with this. Um, she was like, "Well, how, you know, I've I've been just beating my head against the wall with that this digestive stuff." She keeps going back to her gastroenterologist. She goes back to her psychiatrist, and they they're just ping ponging her all over the place. And she goes, "I don't understand. He's a good dude. Um, <clears throat> I've worked with him for a long, long time." Every time I ask him about, you know, this test or that test, and he's like, oh, I don't really do that. And I said, well, here's the thing. He's not a bad guy. Um, he is looking for catastrophic illness and disease. So thank God he does that. Because in the United States, if I have cancer in my GI system, or whatever, we're, we're in the greatest country in the world for emergency care. If I've got like a inflamed appendicitis or something like that, something, you know, something's going to kill me. They'll take it out and they'll make sure that, that I, I don't die. But I said, you keep going to your baker and asking him to fix your engine, right? And that's a powerful statement. You can't, you keep shopping at the wrong store and you can't figure out why they won't help you. Well, like, you know, if I, if I go to, 
uh, Nugget's a great grocery store. But if I go to Nugget, I'm like, hey, guys, what do you think, man? My, I got this sputtering in my engine. Well, what? I don't know. We sell food here. What are you talking about, right? And that's really the disconnect. So um, don't get frustrated. Don't get mad. Just understand that what you're looking for and what they provide with standard medical care, is they're not the same thing. So once we kind of have that aha moment, okay, we need to start looking elsewhere, that's when you really start to get some traction with your health. Yeah, yeah. Listen, guys, good, good, good talk today. I, I want you to make sure you do a couple of things for us. Like this, share this. Miss Hilda from Lexington. Whoop, whoop. In the house. I got my big blue nation from, from we went to the game on Saturday. It was a fun time. Big win, um, right? We, we won. We yes. won Saturday. We won Sunday. Sunday we saw that. Dallas Cowboys, just so you know, we got to throw a shout out to them because uh, it's the year, Seth. I don't think anybody on this, on this uh, webinar cares, but I'm going to root for Green Bay tonight. I cheered for your Cowboys yesterday because my boy Mike McCarthy is the head coach there. So I'm, I'm, I'm watching that. You guys, you guys showed up. I like it. That's it. So listen, we appreciate you guys like this, share this around, make sure you write questions and comments in here. We want to be able to answer questions that you guys are looking for, give you guys why, give you guys help. If we can restore a little bit of hope again, hope is just a simple definition that tomorrow will be better than today. And if we can help you or give you any of that, please let us know. Um, thanks so much. Y'all. Thank you. Bye, guys.